We will do another example. And as done in the previous video, the first thing we're going to do is to plot the complex number that we are given, which is minus 1 minus the square root of 3i, that we want to convert to the polar form. So uh, we get our x and our y axis. Remember that the x axis is the real part and the y axis is the imaginary part. Then we have minus 1 should be somewhere here. And then minus the square root of 3, which could be somewhere here. So our complex number is precisely here, which gives a number in the third quadrant. Now remember that angles in the third quadrant are between 180 degrees and 270, or talking in radians, they are between pi and 3 pi over 2. Now, the first thing we are going to get is, as before, the modulus. And remember, r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. In this case, x is equal to minus 1 and y is equal to minus the square root of 3. So we have r is equal to the square root of x squared, which is minus 1 squared, keep an eye on the brackets, plus y squared, which is minus the square root of 3 squared. So we're going to have the square root of 1 plus 3, as minus by minus will be plus, and the square root of 3 squared gives you only 3, which is the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. If you compare that with the example before, you realize that the modulus is the same, because the absolute value of x and y is exactly the same. Now we are going to calculate the angle, or argument. To get the argument, remember that tan of theta is equal to y over x. Therefore, in this case, tan of theta is equal to minus the square root of 3 over minus 1, which is simply the square root of 3 which is the same answer as in the previous example. Now, because the trigonometric ratio is a known ratio, you can either go to your log tables or use your calculator. If we use the log tables, then we'll do the same as before. Which angle has tan equal to the square root of 3? And the answer is 60 or pi over 3 which means that you could be saying theta is equal to pi over 3. But is this the right answer in this case? If you remember, our number was actually placed in the third quadrant. Therefore, this is not the right answer. We need an angle in the third quadrant. As seen when defining trigonometric ratios of angles above 90 degrees, we know that there is a relationship between an angle in the third quadrant and an angle in the first quadrant. So if you know an angle in the first quadrant, this one here, and you want to know an angle in the third quadrant, since this bit is exactly the same as this bit here, you can get the angle in the third quadrant by simply adding 180, or if you're talking about radius, by simply adding pi. Therefore, in this case, the answer given in the log tables is precisely this angle here, pi over 3, which is an angle in the first quadrant. Therefore, the angle we are looking for, which is 1 in the third quadrant, will be pi plus pi over 3, which is 4 pi over 3. And that is the actual angle of the complex number we were given at the start. If you use your calculator, you will come across exactly the same problem as here. Therefore, if we join all the information, we have that the modulus of this complex number is 2, while the argument, which I'm going to call theta in this case, because it's the letter that we usually use for the angle, is 4 pi over 3. Then, if you remember, the polar form of a complex number is given by r by cos of theta plus i sine 
of theta. And replacing r and theta, we get 2 by cos of 4 pi over 3 plus i sine of 4 pi over 3. You can try now with these other two complex numbers. Z equals minus 1 plus the square root of 3i, which is a number that will be placed in the second quadrant. And then z equals 1 minus the square root of 3, which will be an angle placed in the fourth quadrant.